welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Ruger Precision Rimfire. Now this is in 22 long rifle. I believe you can get it in 17 HMR and 22 Winchester Magnum. I might be wrong about that last one, but I think I'm right about the 22 and 17. Anyway, this rifle has a lot of desirable features. It is a uh, very ergonomically adjustable rifle. It's like, uh, well, it's actually kind of like a copy of the Ruger Precision Rifle for a reason that they designed this rifle to be the trainer rifle for if you have the Ruger Precision Rifle, well, now you can practice with a rifle that's affordable to shoot. Like, as much as you want, you can't really break the bank shooting this thing all day, uh, which is really nice. Anyway, the desirable features of this rifle, well, you have an adjustable cheek rest, which, I mean, you lift this, and now you can bring it up and down wherever you want, you lock it back in place, and you're good to go. Not only does this lever uh, allow you to adjust the cheek rest or the comb height, uh, but it allows you to adjust the length of pull. So if you're looking to buy, you know what, a uh, rifle for your uh, son, your daughter, and you know they got short stubby arms, well, you can bring this in. Or if they got ginormously long things, you can bring it all the way out, which will accommodate giants, trust me. I have actually pretty long arms and this, is mo this has more than enough adjustability for me. And considering I test optics all the time, having an adjustable cheek, uh, cheek rest, brilliant. Uh, other than that, it has an adjustable trigger, which I mean is really crisp and really nice. Wow, that thing breaks and I mean, wow, I, I love it. I love it. I really do like it. Um, as far as how heavy it is, I don't have a trigger uh, scale. At some point I will get one, but sorry guys, not today. Uh, other than that, the action is fairly smooth. Actually, originally it was not smooth at all. All, I, I do want to make sure that's very clear. This action was horribly not smooth. It felt like somebody poured sand in there and I'm just like, oh God, I cleaned it and it still felt like that for a while. I had to put quite a few rounds through it until it's now super smooth and really nice. So just keep that in mind. It's gonna take some working in before it's smooth. Um, other than that, it takes uh, standard AR-15 grips, so you can get one of those nice ones with the beaver tail. Those are actually pretty desirable. I'm likely gonna get one at some point. Uh, other than that, which actually is another big selling feature, is that it takes uh, Ruger 1022 magazines. I mean, that is a big selling feature. If you have a Ruger 1022, you can buy this rifle and just drop the mags in here and you're ready to go. And I mean, the magazines are great. And, th and I've had no feeding issues from them. So just keep in mind, they really designed that pretty good. Other than that, it has a, I think this is the M-Lock. Yeah, this is the M-Lock uh, style rail which means I mean, you can get an M-Lock Picatinny rail and put on like something like an Atlas bipod, which I mean, they're expensive, but I mean, they'll work pretty good with this, uh, with this setup. There's other bipods, which you might want to consider. I don't have one yet. I have a fake Atlas bipod, which I'm planning on doing a comparison video to the real one at some point. But anyway, you can put a lot of stuff that you'd have on AR-15 on this rifle if you want to, but it allows it to be free floating and you can rest it on pretty much anything everywhere and it allows it to be free floating. So um, actually there's one other good thing on this uh, rifle is the 30 MOA rail. So this is good, but you do have to keep something in mind. You have to have a rifle scope that has over 60 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. Well, 60 or more. Because if you have a 50 MOAs worth of internal adjustment, you won't be able to zero it at 50 meters. Okay, or yards, whatever, close enough. Um, because you know what, you're gonna be shooting here and you're gonna be aiming here and your bullets are all always gonna be high. You won't be able to bring it, you bring the bullets down. So with the 60 MOA, you're likely gonna be at the highest uh, adjustment range, but it's, it's gonna allow you to use all of the adjustability range. So this optic here is a Vector Taurus 3 to 18 by 50 and it has 60 MOAs worth of internal adjustment. That means I can accommodate for 60 MOAs worth of bullet drop, which is fantastic. So I think that's it for all the good things. Other than that, I mean, it has a the standard AR-15 uh, safety lever, which only engages when the bolt is uh, closed and in, engaged. There we go. See? Oh, no, it does engage the other way. <laughs> uh, the bolt release is right here, which um, actually another cool feature, so another positive thing, is the adjustment of the length of pull. So if we look here, it can have a short rimfire action, so you would be just pulling it up to this much, which is fine. 
um, which is, uh, there's a stopper in on this bolt, which is actually a flaw. Uh, but if you take off that stopper, you can have a full standard length uh, for standard length draw action. So if you have a 308, this will mimic the same length of pull for the action, okay? So I have taken mine off for a good reason, because, I mean, I've used, I've probably put about what, seven, 800, 800 rounds through this rifle. And there's a steel band that goes right here. I'll put a picture and I'll show you the damage. Uh, but essentially the stopper that but when you depress and you can even pull the bolt out, well, it stops the, the, the bolt from cycling, going any further. And after while well, cycling it for 800 rounds, well, it gets bent. Uh, after about 500 rounds, I noticed that, you know, the bolt was getting really like, it didn't feel right. It felt like it was uh, like sand was in it again. And I'm like, God, I made sure it was clean. It was, it turns out the catch was bending this little steel band. And then it was catching on the inside of, well, the receiver out of the action here. So I just kind of beat it back into place and it became smooth again, but it didn't take long before it bent it back out of shape. So uh, Ruger should do something about that. I don't know if many people have kind of voiced that concern. Maybe it's just I shoot more than most. I don't think so though. Anyway, if you have the same issue, if you have the rifle, you know what, leave your, your experience in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody else who's looking to pr potentially purchase this rifle would appreciate it too. Anyway, so let's just leave this bolt removed. Other than that, you have this little secret compartment, which if you lift that tab, there's an identical tab on this side. Come on, there we go. Oh, almost got it. Awkward. I got it, guys, I'll, I can get this. Yeah, I'll get it today, maybe. There we go. So once you remove this little tab, you have access to this tiny little Allen screen Allen, Allen key, which will then allow you to adjust your trigger, which there's this tiny little hole right, right there. And you take out the little Allen's key and there we go. Put it in there. It's gonna go on a goofy angle and you can adjust the, uh, the trigger, uh, how stiff the trigger is. So I don't have a trigger scale, so I can't really give you a real um, indication on just how light you can get it. But it's really crisp, but it's not crazy light. But I mean, it, gives, it works pretty good for me. Anyway, that's it for the good stuff. So the good stuff aside, now the bad. Uh, let's go with the not so heavy bad. Okay, uh, it's, it's, it's heavy. That's, that's a negative. That's definitely a negative, but it's also a positive because on a precision rifle, you want it to be heavier. If it was a hunting rifle, you know, you'd be swinging this thing all over the place. Uh, well, maybe not swinging it, but you want it to be light so you can engage your target rather quickly. Uh, this rifle isn't really that. It's, it's kind of heavy and it's gonna help you, you know what, you're doing some precision shooting, keeping, you know, at, uh, uh, keeping it steady. So th that's a good and bad. Now the real bad. Uh, when I was considering buying this rifle, well, I, I asked a lot of people their different opinions and some people said it's great, some people say it's hit or miss, but the majority of people said it was great. And I really wanted this one, so I was like, ah, I'm gonna spend 650 and buy it. So it's about 650 Canadian or about 500 US. You can probably find them on better sale than that, but that, that's what I paid. It's fairly new to the market. I think I got a lemon at least originally. Now it shoots like a champ, but originally uh, at 100 meters, I'm doing eight to 12 inch groups. That is atrocious. Now I, I review rifle scopes, so I'm not really uh, I'm not really a noob when it comes to rifles and making sure all everything's torqued to spec. I checked everything. Um, I made sure that this Allen key was tight according to spec, and this one was as well. Uh, I tried it again, it's still giving me horrible groups, even when there was no wind. It was actually rather depressing, which I mean, you know, you spend this money on this gorgeous rifle that's wicked awesome and it just isn't a shooter and it shoots terribly. Like I could shoot from the hip, well, maybe not shoot from the hip and get as bad groups, but you get what I mean. Um, after about 700 rounds through it, she actually turns into a shooter, which I mean, have a look. All right, so we're at 50 meters. Let's see how accurate she is. So I removed the little band that essentially is a stopper. So essentially it's like a full uh, short action rifle, not just a rimfire action rifle. So as opposed to just traveling about this, it now fully travels. 
And the action, I mean, it's not great. It's it's fairly smooth if you're going the, the full way, but yeah, it's okay. Anyway, let's start shooting. Keep in mind these targets are a half MOA. Doing pretty good. Real good. So we're back. What do you guys think about those groups? Um, at about 50 meters, that was a boy, about uh, a boy, about uh, 0.75 inch group. So three quarters of an inch. And at about uh, 100 meters, the best group I did was about one and a quarter inch groups. So that, for me, that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. Some people obviously want more, but right now I can say this rifle shoots pretty good. Um, before it was atrocious and it was really depressing. It kind of leaves a, a bitter taste in your mouth. I'm not really sure I can tell you whether I think you should buy this rifle or not. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hit or miss, but mostly hit according to everybody else. But mine was a miss, which worked itself into a hit. So anyway, I'm assuming likely it's gotta be uh, the barrel breaking itself in, which I mean, I figured, how could it be that bad? But I mean, it was, but now it is, really nice and I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with the accuracy although there's still that little lingering feeling that like oh you did that to me <laughs> anyway uh, I hope you guys found this uh, review useful consider hitting like consider hitting subscribe to see more uh, reviews normally I do more optics reviews but I have these rifles I, I use them for my tests well now I'm gonna use this this rifle for my tests more now that it's it's settled and it's it's accurate and um, yeah, so um, I'll see you next time on Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.